you've ever opened Adobe Photoshop and instantly felt overwhelmed, you're not alone. That's exactly why this Adobe Photoshop tutorial for beginners exists. And we'll walk through the core tools you need to edit photos, design thumbnails, and build brand visuals, all without needing any design background whatsoever. And if you stick around to the end, I'll show you a simple layout technique that professionals use on almost every project they work on. So let's not waste any more time. I'm going to hand this over and let you start learning. We're going to cover a few of the essential things that you need to know to get started on your first project. When we first open the program, this is what we're going to see. We can either choose new file in the top left corner, which will allow us to set the parameters for our document and set us up with a blank white stage. Or we can choose to open a file and you can open a photo up where you can start your edits off of that photo. Today, I'm going to be working off of this photo of a sunflower. Understanding the interface and layers. Photoshop's interface has the toolbar on the left, the properties and the layers on the right, and the canvas in the middle. When you first open your photo, you have the photo as the background layer, which we can unlock to start making edits to. If we would like to draw or add anything onto this image to not destruct our original image, we add layers on top of this and then click on that individual layer to draw on top of that. And then you can always hide and show your added elements by clicking this little eyeball right here next to the layer. Adding layers on top of your image will always allow you to keep your original image intact if you ever feel like you need to revert back to the beginning. Now we're gonna go through some of the tools that we have on the left-hand side of the screen. On the top, we have the Move tool. Underneath this, we have the Rectangular Marquee tool, which will allow you to click and drag on top of a selection of your image. So for example, if I want to select this flower, I hit Command-C to copy. I select a new layer. If I press Command-V, that will paste. If I press Command-Shift-V, that will ensure that I paste it in the same spot on my screen. So I press Command-Shift-V. Now you can see there's a flower that showed up here. If I hide my original layer, I can see that I just drew a rectangle and copied this part of the image onto my new layer. Underneath the rectangular marquee tool, we have the lasso tool, which allows us to be a little bit more exact with our selections. I can do the same thing. Command C, Command Shift V. This time I made a little bit more of a fun selection. The next tool is the quick selection tool. And this tool actually recognizes the shapes within your image. So as you're clicking and dragging around your image and the shape that you want to pick up, the tool does all the work for you instead of having to be so exact with your drawing when using the lasso tool. So now if I copy and paste this selection, you can see the differences in all three of my selections. This is the rectangular selection. This is by using the lasso tool. And this is by using the quick selection tool. These are also all easy ways that you can remove the background from your image and select different elements and move them around to different layers. With all of Adobe Photoshop's recent AI updates, they've also included the select subject button, where if we click this, without us having to do any work with any of the tools I even just showed you, pretty crazy. And we can fine tune this. For example, if we want to add in the stem to our selection, up at the very top, if we hit the paintbrush with the plus sign, that will allow us to extend our selection. And as you can see now, I've selected some of the background. So if I want to remove this, I can click the paintbrush with the minus sign. And this will allow me to take away from my selection. At any point, if you have a selection made on your screen and you decided you don't want to have this selected anymore, press Command D on your keyboard and this will unselect everything you have. The inverse of select subject would be remove background. So this takes it one step further and again, does all the work for you. You might be shocked right away because you'll think, oh my gosh, my original image was affected. How am I ever gonna get that sky or the stem back? Well, what this did for you is it created a mask and you can see that over here. And the white parts of this mask is what was kept and the black parts of the mask are what was removed. If we want to bring the stem back, what we have to do is select our mask on the right-hand side of the screen, go to your paintbrush tool, change your color to white. So we're painting in white. We're gonna change the size of our paintbrush at the top of the screen. And now if we have our mask selected, we can draw back on our mask and this will bring back parts of the image that we want to bring back. And again, if I want to now remove this, I can change the color to black. 
and we can take away from our image as well. So right off the bat, that's a few ways to start editing your images with the use of Photoshop's new AI tools and the first few selection tools. Adjustment layers and filters. If we go to the adjustments panel next to the properties panel, you have all of these adjustment layers that you can add to your photo. If I wanna change the brightness of my photo, I'll click on the layer I wanna change the brightness of, add this adjustment layer on top. This now allows me to edit the colors and brightness of my images. If I want to change the saturation and the hue, you can do that here as well. So right now, as you can see in my layers panel, the hue and the brightness adjustment layers are affecting both this sunflower and the sunflower below. So we're seeing just the sunflower from this layer and we're seeing the entire image on the bottom layer. But let's say I just wanted my brightness and hue to affect the sunflower by itself. I can right click on this adjustment layer and click create clipping mask. And what this will do is it will apply the effect to only the layer directly below. So now, as you can see, as I'm changing the colors of my sunflower here, my entire image is not getting affected, just the layer directly below the adjustment layer. If you want to add a filter like blur or sharpen or add noise to your image, these would be located under the filters panel at the very top of your screen. Before you can add a filter, make sure the layer that you want to apply your filter to is selected. So I'm going to select the background image here. Go up to the top, click filter, and I'm going to pixelate my image and choose crystallize. And then sometimes you'll get a pop-up, which allows you to change the parameters of that effect you're about to apply. I'm going to hit OK. As you can see now, my whole background image is warped. But something that I would also recommend always doing, which I actually didn't do just now, so I'm going to undo, is take your original image at the bottom of your layers panel, copy and paste it, and just keep it at the very bottom of your layers panel. This will allow you to always have that original copy of your photo that you can reference back and forth to see the changes you've made throughout your project. Using text and shapes. Use the text tool on your toolbar. You can also press T on your keyboard and then tap on your photo image once to type on your canvas. As you can see, I was just typing, nothing was showing up. The reasoning for that is because my text layer is underneath my background layer. So I'm going to take my layer, rearrange it and bring it above all of my other layers so I can see my text now. You can change all the properties of your text by going to the properties panel. And here's where you can change the color of your text, the size, the font, the spacing, anything you could think of. If I wanted to create a background behind my text, I would add a new layer, make sure that layer is underneath my text. I would now go over to my toolbar, find my shape tool, which is this rectangle down here. And then I would draw a rectangle on my screen. With your shape tool, you have the ability to change the fill of your shape and the stroke of your shape. The fill is what the color of your shape will actually be. And the stroke is the color of the outline. So I'm going to make the outline smaller change the color to black and then I'm going to make the inside color of my rectangle white so I can see the text better. The last thing I'm going to show you here is Photoshop's generative AI. I click my lasso tool in the left hand side of my screen and let's say I wanted to add clouds to this image. I'm going to draw in the sky the shape of where I want the clouds to be. Click generative fill and write clouds. Then Photoshop gives you three different options of clouds that you can then choose to add or not add to your image. This AI tool is definitely a game changer in Photoshop and I would definitely recommend using this to enhance your projects. All right, so if I'm happy with my image and my project, it's time to export. We're going to go to File, Export, Export As, and then this pop-up will show up where you can choose the format of your file and how you'd want to export it. And in this case, I'm just going to choose JPEG because that's typically great for photos. And I'm going to set the quality to the highest because I always like exporting at the highest quality. Next, you're going to hit export and a new pop-up will show up on your screen, which will allow you to choose the location of where you want to save your project. And then you're done. Now you've learned the basics to create and edit in Photoshop. And I hope you feel confident to start your first project.